she has been part of the Canadian television landscape for over three decades, and in that time, she has made her mark in the acting world, the music world, but most famously, in the fashion world. From Paris to Milan, Marc Jacobs to Karl Lagerfeld, if you want to get the inside track on fashion, there's only one lady to talk to, and it's the host of Fashion Television, Jeannie Becker. Thank you so much Hi. for Oh, thank us. you so much for that great intro. <laughs> <laughs> I almost believe half of it. Oh. <laughs> I, it's incredible. Yeah, three decades. Wow. wow. This year, 30 years ago, um, we started with uh, the new music with J.D. Roberts. And right. Wow, the rest is... History, it's incredible. Well, music and fashion, uh, most time goes hand in hand, Absolutely. so I'm sure it wasn't a difficult transition for you. And when you had an early start in broadcasting, was your initial uh, passion for fashion, or was there always music to begin well, with? Well, my initial start in broadcasting was as an actress. Mm -hmm. um, I started acting professionally when I was 16 years old, doing a sitcom wow. for the CBC called Toby, and uh, did quite a few commercials and, and bits and movies, and went to study acting uh, in New York, and mime in Paris. I read that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And now I never shut up for a <laughs> former mime artist. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it really happened uh, quite um, serendipitously uh, how I even got into hosting on television and mm. then, of course, uh, hosting a show about fashion. I always loved fashion mm -hmm. as much as, you know, the next girl, obviously. But I was the first on my block to, you know, have go-go boots in 1968 <laughs> and really dating myself. But, you know, I really did love fashion, no question. My mom used to make all our clothes and I, I always loved that self-expression through fashion. And anyone interested in theater and performance is going to really nice. relate to that whole costume mm -hmm. aspect of fashion. Uh, but it wasn't until I was... It, working in Toronto on the new music um, and getting a little bit tired of the rock and roll thing. You know, this is after doing it for six years, we had launched much music and it was the mid 80s and the music scene at that time was getting a little, I don't know, boring to me. Uh, you know, what's the next big thing? And I heard there was a buzz around the station that we're thinking of maybe putting a, a fashion show on television and it's going to be like, you know, fashion videos, mm. you know, and I heard about this and I thought, well, that sounds cool, but let's also interview the designers like we did with the rock stars on, right. on the new music. And uh, they were, well, I don't know about that. We'll see. But, you know, we're going to find some gorgeous chick to host this show, like a model or something. You know, yeah. she'll be like a fashion VJ. And I thought, you know, gorgeous chick. You know, what about me? I paid my dues of the trenches of rock and <laughs> yeah, roll. And I'm sure. ready for like the next big thing. And fashion is the kind of thing that you can grow old in. <laughs> the, the old word, old, but you know you can you can grow with it. Mm -hmm. So I just you know petitioned. I said you know let me do this, let me, and uh, finally they said you know what? Okay, we'll let you host this first episode of fashion television. Wow. This brilliant uh, young uh, producer Jay Levine uh, mm -hmm. created the show, and you know we just went on and it worked. And out. did you know from the first moment that you? Uh, did the show that this is this where is you fit. Fair. It felt right to me. Um, I love people. That's mm -hmm. what it's about for me. Like, not the yes. clothes. Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to disillusion anyone. You know, clothes are great, but they're nothing without the people who wear them. And they're really, you know, they're to, to enhance us and mm -hmm. to help us express ourselves. So when I got involved in that fashion arena, all of a sudden it just felt so electric and so live because the personalities mm -hmm. were larger than life. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. And I thought, ah, I thought I'd seen it all in the world of rock and roll. You know, I'm <laughs> never going to see any egos bigger than this, but sure oh, enough, no. the fashion world has egos bigger <laughs> than the rock world. Well, you're in a boys club at the time. There weren't a lot of powerful women faces mm. in television at the time. Very so true. What was that like for you to kind of uh, climb up that ladder oh, as a female? Oh, baby, I could write a book about it. And I am writing a book <laughs> you, about I'm it. I'm sure so yes, you would. Do stay tuned. Uh -huh. It was really tough. I yeah. mean, uh, first of all, in those days, you've got to remember, if you were pregnant, you know, you... Um, you could maybe take off for three months maximum, but there was no guarantee that they would hold your job for right. you. They would just, you know, give you another job. But even that was like too much of a threat for me. I thought, oh, I've worked so hard and now I'm pregnant and, you know, I'm going to have, you know, my first baby. What am I going to do? And uh, the powers that be made it very clear to me that if I left, you know, to go off for an mm -hmm. extended mat leave, I would not have the job when I came back. Mm -hmm. So I was back at work like two and a half weeks later wow. yeah with both kids wow you, know, you just couldn't I mean I'd worked so hard yeah for, for all this I did to step away from it at that point and I was 35 before I had my first kid you know oh, and okay. I, which I think is a good thing I think you should wait and yes. you know, get get some things established first mm -hmm. but so on that level it was hard and you know getting credibility when you're working in the world you know this infotainment world yeah. as they called it back then you know well is it news is it journalism not really you know you're out there sort of you know 
entertaining and talking to actors and celebrities and you know it was very hard for me to get a kind of credibility right. it mm -hmm. felt for, for a long time too because people hadn't seen this is that back sort of in, television. This is back in 1985 is when you started the show. Well correct? when I started that show yeah exactly. And, and was there television. any show like that no. around the world? We no. were the first people to really look at the fashion scene as entertainment right. and really make it accessible mm -hmm. to people. We weren't fashion experts. I was an entertainment reporter, right. both from you know the old City Pulse uh, news show and, and certainly my days with uh, the new music and then movie television. I, mm -hmm. I, I used to work for Entertainment Tonight, the American Entertainment mm -hmm. Tonight. So it was all um, ab about looking at this enigmatic world of fashion through the lens you know, of an entertainment scene, which yeah. it is. But at that time, the only type of television that was, Elsa Clench had a show on CNN called Style, and it was very prim and proper, and she would ask questions like, you know, why beige? <laughs> no, which is fine, because she was a, she was a proper fashion journalist, right. a fashion right. editor. We were all about, you know, the hype and the jive and the, and the creative process of the scene and the personalities, yes. and, and truly, that is the way we, we yeah. cover fashion today still, mm -hmm. and of course, many other programs cover fashion in that way, but we were the first. Wow. Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna talk to you some That's more so about much. you know what you've been up to. Uh, I know you're in pa Paris recently. Yeah, just got um, back. Toronto Fashion Week's going on, but we want to um, throw to a clip right now uh, from you uh, at, at Paris Fashion Week with uh, Lindsay Lohan. Right now, we'll be back after the break on daytime. It's incredible. Oh, it's it's so magnificent. Well, it's you it have is. a mutual respect. We're, we're, I think so we both don't, don't realize. I'm, I'm so going too to much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, them out so we could. She, she, I mean, she likes to try everything, and she's a fashion consumer. She loves fashion. <laughs> Great. Welcome back. We're talking with Jeannie Becker about fashion and life. Now, it's very tough for women to be in this industry and decide whether it's time for family or time for work. So, Jeannie, I want to ask you about that. How did you balance life mm. and your career? I don't know. It's still uh, a balancing act, always. I mean, I think for all of us out there who want to have it all, uh, it's a very, very fine line that you walk. Um, there was no way that I was, I, I always knew that I wanted to have kids, I wanted to have, you know, a family life, and that was really, really important to me. But I also really wanted to have a career. That was really important to me, too. And I also always felt that a career was the one thing, you know, that would never forsake you. Um, you know, people come and go. And it's mm -hmm. horrible to say, but, you know, uh, I my marriage broke up in uh, 1998. You know, t totally, you know, I, I didn't suspect it. I didn't see it coming. I was yeah. like, totally devastated, like, you know, hit by a Mack truck and, and sank into a very deep, dark depression. But I had my work, you know, thank God I had this job that I really loved and this, um, this sense of myself mm -hmm. and a sense of purpose. And mm -hmm. that's what, you know, helped get me out of bed every morning. So Otherwise, what did you do to pull through? Uh, you know, you've had that, that truck hit you in the morning. You feel like a, a a bag of you know, you dirt. Just, for, oh, so many people going through this, and there's so many people obviously that you know live with this depression mm -hmm. for you know extended periods mm -hmm. of time. You know, horrible stuff happens, and you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, you know, thank God I had my girls, my daughters, yeah. who, you know, my my rocks, um, and they were there. They were really young at the time. I think they were like eight and ten mm -hmm. or something. But all of a sudden, I found myself a single mom with this great big career and this this persona that I had to maintain. You know, out there in the in the glamorous world of bright lights. Well, and, and that's the thing, how do, how do you do that? How do you maintain the public face when, you know, things but personally I, I, are happening? Again, I say I can't really, there's, there's not really a formula to it, but mm -hmm. when you're really passionate about something and you really know that, that that's, you know, a lot of what it's all about for you, you, you just force yourself to keep going. There were days, I'm sure, that I did my job when part of me was like a zombie. Yeah. Like I remember I'd sit in the makeup chair and I couldn't even communicate, I couldn't even talk to my, my makeup artist, my hairdresser. These are people that, that had been with me since 1979. Mm -hmm. And this was like in 1998. So yeah. it was like many years later, you know, 20 years I'd been working with these people. They were like family to me, but I couldn't even, I couldn't even talk to them. I couldn't even talk about it. I was just so devastated, but I knew that I was going out with a cameraman and I was going to go out and get a story mm -hmm. and I was going to go do an interview and I was just going to switch into this mode. And that's why I say, you know, that the work really saved, saved my life at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you know, and, and my girls too, of course, and then knowing that I had them to, to come home to Well, Jeannie, you've been night. go, go, go for, for 30 years, really? Yeah, I okay? know, and I know, I must be crazy. Well, you're 